Hello everyone, a uh, very warm welcome to the Smart RN channel. My name is Henry. Today we are going to look at the faces of acute kidney injury. In our previous video, we looked at acute kidney injury and we considered the definition, the risk factor and causes for acute kidney injury. Remember we also said that acute kidney injury is reversible. In other words, we can be able to restore our kidneys back to normal filtration function if we address the causes of AKI in a timely manner. Otherwise, acute kidney injury could progress to chronic kidney failure. Let us look at the phases of AKI. One, we have the initiation or the onset phase. This is the phase that lasts from the beginning of the insult up to the appearance of the signs and symptoms. There is a time that lapses from the time we have the insult up to the time when the signs and symptoms appear and that constitutes the initiation or the onset phase. This phase is normally triggered by the prerenal conditions. Remember those prerenal conditions like decreased circulating volume, decreased blood pressure and even decreased oxygenation. These prenatal conditions are the ones which are going to trigger the insult and therefore enter our kidney or our kidneys into the onset phase of acute kidney injury. During the onset phase, we have got decreased urine output because our kidneys are not functioning as they should. We have a high specific gravity of urine and then we also have decreased sodium. Remember, it is during this onset phase that the kidneys are going to issue compensatory mechanism. They will put in place mechanism to try and overcome these prenatal conditions that are interfering with um, circulation or with perfusion. For example, they are going to release renin to, to put into place the renin and utensin and dorsal system to try and bump up the blood pressure. The kidneys are also going to hold on to the sodium and water just to try and increase perfusion. So this compensatory mechanism are issued during this particular onset phase. Now, when these mechanisms fail, we enter the oliguric phase of acute kidney injury. The word oliguric comes from the word oliguria, decreased urine production. So during this oliguric phase, we have decreased urine production up to less than 400 milliliters per day. In 24 hours, these patients can only put up less than 400 milliliters of urine per day. That's a drastic decrease in urine production. During this phase, we are also going to see an elevated BUN creatinine ratio. We have got elevated levels of blood urea nitrogen. We have got elevated levels of creatinine in our blood. So the BUN creatinine ratio is going to increase because the kidneys are not clearing these elements from our blood. Then we are also going to have acidosis. Why? Because of elevated levels of hydrogen ions in our body. Then we are going to have electrolyte abnormalities. For example, kidneys are the ones that clear potassium from our body. So when they are not working properly, the levels of potassium are going to be elevated in our blood. And this is a danger to the performance of our hearts. Remember we said that failure in the renal system could also result in failure in other systems of the body. So that means that there are various organs that are going to be affected when the kidneys are not doing their work properly. And so when we have electrolyte abnormalities, for example, elevated levels of potassium, our hearts are going to fail or they're not going to work properly. Then we have got fluid overload. During this oliguric phase, we have fluid overload. We have fluid in our ankles. We have got fluid in the legs. We have got fluid in our faces. So you begin to see all these parts of the body getting swollen because the kidneys are not clearing fluid from the body as they should. So during the oliguric phase, we have got decreased amount of urine and we have got fluid volume overload in our body because the kidneys are not clearing this particular fluid. So remember, uh, by this time, by the oliguric phase, we put into place mechanism or we start taking actions to solve 
those conditions of AKI. We begin countering the causes of AKI. We begin addressing the causes of AKI. So when this correction of AKI comes into effect, we now enter into the diuretic phase of acute kidney injury. When those measures begin to bear fruit, when those measures to counter AKI causes begin to bear fruit, then we enter into the diuretic phase. As the name suggests, this is a phase where we have diuresis, large amounts of urine being produced by this patient. We have what we call osmotic diuresis. This is diuresis as a result of a high concentration of elements in urine. So osmotic diuresis occurs during the diuretic phase. We have what increased urine output up to between 3 to 5 liters per day. Compare this with the oliguric phase. In the oliguric phase, we had less than 400 ml of urine in 24 hours. But during the diuretic phase, when those um, AKI causes have been corrected, we now have 3 to 5 liters of urine per day. That is a large amount of urine. So our kidneys have started coming back to normal function. During this phase, we could also experience dehydration. These patients are losing a lot of water through osmotic diuresis. So they could experience dehydration during this particular phase. Then you also have electrolyte imbalances. So we could see dehydration and even electrolyte imbalances during the diuretic phase. Towards the end of the diuretic phase, we begin to see a normalization in the values of BUN creatinine, acid base, and even electrolyte. They begin, we begin to see normalized levels of these elements in the blood stream. Why? Because our kidneys have just come back to normal function. And then lastly, we have the recovery phase. This is the phase in which the kidneys return to normal function. And during this phase, the glomerular filtration rate is between 70 to 80 percent. Remember, with, when the kidneys have got a GFR of 70 to 80 percent, then that is improved or that is go considered to be normal function in our kidney. Now, during this recovery phase, our fluid and electrolyte levels have normalized, and this could take um, several months up to one year. So the recovery phase is that phase in which kidneys recover or they come back to normal function. So that's why we say that AKI is reversible. Now, what are the clinical manifestations of acute kidney injury? When somebody has acute kidney injury, what are those signs and symptoms that you can notice in these people? One, decreased urine output. Remember, oliguric phase. We have got up to less than 400 ml of urine per day. So decreased urine output is a clinical manifestation of uh, acute kidney injury. The kidneys are not performing as they should. Then we have got volume overload or fluid overload. People begin to swell in their legs, in their ankles, in their faces. This is because of fluid overload. The kidneys are not clearing that fluid from our body. Hyperkalemia. If you take their labs, there are elevated levels of potassium. Why? The kidneys are not clearing potassium. And that's why we say this is a danger to our heart. Then, hyponatremia. There is decreased levels of um, sodium in our body. Then we have got anemia, decreased blood. This is as a result because kidneys are the ones that release erythropoietin. And erythropoietin normally stimulates our red blood cell production from the bone marrow. So anemia could result as a result of acute kidney injury because erythropoietin is not being released as it should. Then we have got elevated levels of BUN, blood urea nitrogen. We have got elevated levels of creatinine. And by the way, creatinine is the best indicator of renal failure. If you want to diagnose renal failure, 
you look at the levels of creatinine because kidneys are the ones that clear creatinine from our bloodstream so creatinine is the best indicator of renal failure so levels of creatinine in our blood get elevated as a result of acute kidney injury then we also have decreased calcium levels now remember kidneys are the ones that activate vitamin d and activated vitamin d helps us to absorb calcium in the gi tract so when the kidneys are not performing well when the kidneys are injured then we do not have activation of vitamin d and therefore our calcium levels are going to go down because our bodies are no longer absorbing calcium in the gi tract and then we have got metabolic acidosis elevated levels of hydrogen ions and decreased levels of bicarbonate so this will result in metabolic acidosis so these are the clinical manifestations of acute kidney injury and that brings us to the end of our video presentation today as always uh, drop a comment share this video like this video and if you are not a subscriber please i ask you to subscribe to this channel for me here it is a goodbye